Hello and welcome to the Prepare Your Work workshop. This is the third of four in a series of workshops produced uh, by ArtLink in partnership with the City of Phoenix. Um, tonight, I am your moderator. I am Katrina Kaler, President and CEO of ArtLink, and we are in the midst of Art Detour 35. It is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023 in case you're watching this three years down the line. Um, tonight, we have two expert uh, panelists to share some insights and some uh, great tips on how to actually prepare your work. This series is of four is all about preparedness. It's really to help um, provide tips and insights that will help you um, navigate some, um, some of your career uh, the, the corners you have to turn as you develop your artist career, how to submit to calls, how to photograph your work, and then once you actually get selected for an opportunity, how to prepare that work for exhibition. Um, so thank you for joining us this evening, and uh, I'd like to switch over to the uh, leaders of the discussion and invite them to introduce themselves. First is Laura Spalding Best. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Laura Spalding Best. I'm an artist um, and have been active in the Valley art scene since about um, 2003 when I finished um, getting my painting degree from ASU. Been pretty consistently involved since then. And I've also, um, I'm also an arts professional. So I have been um, working um, in arts and culture since 2006. Um, I was the exhibitions manager at Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art for um, almost 16 years. Um, and in that time I installed um, a few, uh, more than well over hundred major museum exhibitions um, and uh, oversaw the design and installation of them. And I'm currently the senior director of exhibits at Desert Botanical Garden. Um, so when we get to it, I'll be sharing um, a lot of uh, that experience and knowledge with you. Thank you, Laura. I'll also add that Laura is uh, currently serving on the ArtLink Artist Council and has been very busy preparing and showing work over this past week for the Art Decor Gala. So thank you, Laura, for being here My once pleasure. again. And now, Robert Gentile. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Robert Gentile. I am the owner of Grand Art House, um, curatorial programs manager for ArtLink director of Mood Room, and I also run Saseo Gallery. Um, been in here, been in the Valley since 2008, originally from New York. Got my BFA and my MBA. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I have a lot of knowledge in the field. So I appreciate the warm intro. I've worked with many of you, I see, and um, I'm looking forward to working with the rest of you and down the, down the line. <laughs> No, it's an absolute pleasure to be with both of you. I'm going to make each of you co-hosts and so you can share to your heart's delight. And uh, Laura, I think I'm throwing it to you first. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, guys. Let's see. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay. Are you seeing my, there we go. You're seeing it in presentation mode? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start off just talking a little bit about um, my work. Um, the unique thing about being an artist um, and doing um, art installations professionally, which most people who work in this field um, tend to be artists. So um, the word, you know, the word for um, people that design gallery shows and install artwork, they're called art handlers, preparators. Um, my role was an exhibitions manager. They're also called um, exhibit designers or chief preparators at museums, at professional galleries. Um, it's a pretty um, wonderful behind the scenes job where you learn a lot about art logistics um, and uh, how to care for work. And then you take those skills and just really selfishly use them for your own work, um, which my, uh, the trajectory of my work um, and my practice as an artist has absolutely been affected by um, my work in the field. So I'm gonna briefly talk about um, my work. Um, I'm a, an oil painter 
and I largely work um, in installation groups of um, found objects. And um, uh, when my, my favorite thing is to really know a space before I install artwork in it, um, because I come from this um, uh, installation background, I am always thinking um, spatially. And, and it's something that was a big shift in my work from maybe approaching painting as like pieces that were arranged evenly on a wall, like separate canvases, I mean, I haven't painted on canvas for many, many years, but um, to thinking of them as more like holistic um, parts of a whole, things that occupy a space. Um, when you install contemporary art over and over again, you kind of think of things um, a little bit differently. So um, my work, uh, the more time I was in a museum, the more my work started to like uh, creep and crawl and take over and big kind of installation based things, kind of having big impact and saturation. That's something that I really like to see in my work. And then, you know, these individual pieces are really rewarding on their own as well. Um, so I, most of my subject matter is the, the urban landscape, specifically of Phoenix, but I think a lot about how we use our resources in a desert climate um, and how to convey that. Um, through uh, painting, kind of, you know, relaying my own thoughts and fears and anxieties about climate change and, um, you know, uh, uh, water use in the desert. So I do that through a lot of domestic objects. They become the surface of my, of my paintings. Um, and I will talk to you a lot about framing and things like that later on, but you'll see that I found my own solution to avoid frames in all ways for myself as an artist. <clears throat> um, and, you know, this is um, one of the things I'm, I'm going to chat about a little bit is, you know, intention in your work and being able to share that and convey that to someone else. Um, very happily, this piece that you see here was just purchased by Phoenix Airport Museum, um, which is a wonderful thing for me. But I definitely had to create an installation manual for this piece um, because I will not be overseeing the installation of it when it goes on view the next time. Um, so for their um, art handling team, for their preparators, I wanted to make sure that they knew exactly what my intention was behind it, um, what order it went in, instead of just sharing a photograph. Um, it was really important for me to say that horizon line carries across the whole piece. That top row is a has a reflection. That's what the bottom row is, is reflecting the top pieces. So, um, you know, all of that seems like a simple thing to convey, but in fact, it becomes a several page document um, to make it really helpful and really clear and obvious to the people that are going to be installing it. Um, I'm also a muralist and I do public art and installation based pieces outdoors. This is the piece I had at Tempe Town Lake. Um, but back to my professional career. I am, um, like I said, I was exhibition manager at Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art for almost 16 years. And in that role, um, my job was to design and install museum exhibitions and oversee the team that did them. So whoever was touching the art, that was me and my team, people wearing white gloves or nitrile gloves, people that were allowed to, you know, move things around. That was, um, that was me. So I've installed um, um, a number of pieces that have come to me in different conditions, um, even world famous artists um, and national artists down to local artists. Um, everybody delivers their work uh, slightly differently and there should be a really wonderful standard. And there is in a lot of ways, um, as far as like um, art packing industry goes, um, but every, every artist in their studio sends their work a little bit differently um, and sends instructions for their work a little bit differently. I have, I have stood in front of artworks and been um, absolutely baffled about how to install them. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to share a few fun pictures before I get to my much more boring slides, but that have the really good um, text information for everybody. Um, I think it's, really good to um, consider, um, you know, I'm, we're looking at museum scope exhibitions here, but consider the number of people that um, would be there to support your work. 
in some way that would be there to care about your work in some way. Um, even in what you might consider to be like a small um, exhibition downtown, um, if you're if you're showing a piece of work there, it's um, it's important. The way that you treat it is important. The way that you convey um, the care of it and and how you have treated it before you hand it off is important, and it it impacts the way that um, other people are going to interact with your work. Um, ideally, uh, I would treat um, any artwork that came across. Um, or that that went through my hands the exact same way. So if you had a small framed photograph or a small acrylic painting and I was going to be installing it, I would treat it with the same care um, and respect that I would treat like, you know, an Ai Weiwei or a, 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 a artwork that was insured for a million dollars. Um, and it's important that um, as an artist that you can have that mindset shift um, as well, because you're very aware of how you made your work, you know that you could make another one. Um, but if you if you start to shift your way of thinking that this is a really important thing, um, that it's an object that should be handled carefully um, by everyone, if you set that precedent, then it will carry over um, into the world, into the gallery world, into the museum world, wherever your artwork may end up. I think I'm coming to the end here. Um, and, and some of this is just to show the variety of mediums that I've installed. Um, and all of these are, are just snapshots from me. I don't think many of them are professional photographs um, of uh, installations that oftentimes I worked on really closely with an artist and sometimes they were on the other side of the world and just sent um, instructions and well-packed artwork. Um, and sometimes uh, it was uh, left to myself and the curator to decide how it would be installed. So um, I kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, I think this is the biggest takeaway I want everybody to have from this workshop is that your work is a direct reflection of you as an artist. So everybody on the receiving end of your work um, will see how you cared for it and how uh, the condition it was in when you delivered it, um, what additional information that you shared with them. And if you're a really well-prepared artist, you that is something that carries over. Um, you will be recommended for future projects if you deliver professional, well thought out, ready to install artwork. Um, and none of it's easy. I, I say this having done it for a really long time um, and, um, and having um, a professional arts career as well as an artistic career. It's all hard. Um, it takes um, effort and uh, commitment to, to give your work that extra bump. You know, um, I think a lot of people think about what they have to do to prepare their work to be professional. Um, and it's kind of a, a roadblock. Uh, it's something that's kind of intimidating and they don't really know how to pursue it. So We'll talk about some specifics and then I think that we'll have lots of time for questions um, if you have something that's you really want to know for yourself. Um, but it starts with the art. You know, I think that or when you're when we're all younger, when we're uh, working in sketchbooks and art class and we're kind of fulfilling assignments or just making the kind of work we want to make, um, it's a really different mindset. And if you are an artist who wants to um, have their work shown professionally, even if it's in um, you know um, a gallery that's off the beaten path, if it's something that's a more alternative space, that's awesome. Your art can still be um, really professional looking, even if you know it's got if it if it is something that's going to be installed on ground level or it's it's going to be something that has like a more um, edgy installation. It still should be well thought out. The idea is that um, you can. Um, you can install your work in any kind of situation and have it um, have no distractions from what the intent of the work is. So I like to tell people to, when, when you get to the point that you're really taking yourself seriously to start thinking about the installation of your work with the conception of your work. So if you're, if you're thinking about these things in tandem, 
then you save yourself a bunch of work down the road. So for example, if you are like set on doing um, a series of 20 paintings and um, you know uh, the, the gallery that you're hoping to show them in, you, you know how they would be installed, say they're in a grid that's four paintings up and five paintings across, then you wanna make sure that the way that you attach the hardware on, hardware on the back of them um, from the very beginning is all consistent and the same because either yourself or whoever else is going to be installing that work for you, lucky people like me and Rob, um, that they would want it to be consistent in the same spot to hang a perfectly even grid that, um, that is not um, super challenging to get the hardware all level and at the same even spacing. You can, you can help with that by putting your hardware in the consistent same spot on the back of each frame or canvas or whatever it might be. Um, and that is uh, something that, that's an example of something that you think about when you start. So a lot of my pieces um, you can see from my images are on uh, metal dishes. And um, I love to just dive into things. It's always against my nature um, when I'm preparing certain things. I like to jump right into a project and paint, 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 paint. Um, and that's a fun part about being an artist. But there are some pieces that I have where I've conceived of them to be kind of like lopsided on the wall where the paint flows from one to another. And I have to make those mounts first. I have to make the specialty hardware that helps them sit off the wall at the exact right angle. And uh, sometimes they have to be welded to the back um, or at least epoxied or attached in a way that um, it would be impossible to do after it was painted. So I have to do those things first. And um, it's, you know, it's an extra step, um, but it's what makes it really professional when I deliver it to a space. Um, the other thing that I encourage you to think about all the time is on a couple of levels, but to think about other people. Um, so you have to always be putting yourself in the role of who would be, um, putting your work, work up in the gallery just because they're professionals doesn't mean they know anything about you um, or your work. So it's good to pretend like you've never come across your artwork before, like you don't know the intent of the piece um, because what's obvious to you is not obvious to other people. Um, mm. if you, what's that? I think I missed something there. Um, so basically if, if someone is looking at your work and going, how am I supposed to hang this, then, you know, you've, you, you failed on that one. Um, and I don't mean that to sound harsh, but I think that um, anybody who's installed work before has received artwork and they said, there's nothing I can, they've just sent me a board. Um, there's no holes in it. There's no hardware attached to the back. There's no wires, there's no hooks. There's how do they want me to put this on the wall? Do they want me to lean it against the wall? And there's no, you know, maybe no instructions or anything like that. Um, and um, I've, uh, both in museums, um, in smaller gallery shows and other satellite spaces that I've installed artwork in. Um, I've had work come across like that. Um, and it's up to you as the artist to, um, to make it easy to understand how your art should be attached to the wall um, or you know, installed in a space, depending on what your medium is. So there's, there's so many specs you can think about for your work. Um, you know, like, again, this is obvious to you, but it might not be obvious to others. So if you use gold leaf on a painting, maybe you want a really dramatic spotlight on your work or you wanna be near natural light. Um, if you're um, a sculptor, how do you want people to come across your work? How are they going to um, be interacting with it? Is it at eye level? Is it something to be looked down upon? Um, all of that should be something that you call out. Um, you know, I, I had this, the, the specific order to a triptych is a, that I have here as an example is a, is a real life story where I had people um, contribute work to a faculty show and um, I was familiar with the work, but they had just, um, they hadn't numbered them one, two, and three, and they'd submitted a triptych. And I realized after I had hung it completely on the wall because I was just putting it in the order that they had sent it, that um, there was a progression of the piece. There was, it was a chair that was sprouting wings and the last one it was flying. And it was super obvious to me afterwards, but I was hanging like 50 other works that day. Um, so 
it would have been really helpful if the person had labeled them, you know, left, middle, right, or one, two, three, or better yet, had taken a picture for me and put it on the back of the piece to show what that installation should look like. Because sometimes you think my work's really simple. It's just in a frame. What would someone not understand about that? Um, and it's definitely not to say that people in our profession are you know, dumb or anything like that. Uh, it's that they don't know you and they don't know your work. Um, so you shouldn't assume that they will understand it when they see it and say, oh, clearly this must be installed like this, one, two, three. Um, and you know, if you're an, um, an installation artist, um, if you do video, those are the most important things to call out. If you have a, a video monitor and you're showing a work, maybe you don't want a, a bright light nearby. Um, if you have um, a projection or an audio-based work, it's really important to know if the audio is coming from above, if it's coming at you at a viewer, if it's coming from the sides. Um, it's a whole, um, for that kind of artwork, for installation-based artwork or for digital artwork, it can be a whole bodily experience. Um, and it's really important to know what your intent behind it is. Um, and so I encourage everybody to communicate beforehand with the gallery that they're going to be showing their work with, the museum, whatever it might be, the art space that they're going to be showing their work with. If you have, you know, any kind of specifications for your work, even if they're really basic, is to get in front of it. And then when you do drop it off, to have it written as well. Um, it's good to talk about it, but if you if it's just a verbal description, it will very likely get lost in the shuffle because if it's a group exhibition or even if it's a solo show, um, conveying something to one person um, is not going to make it um, travel to. So if you're, for example, if you're talking to a curator, it might not make it to the art handler. Um, the other thing I definitely encourage artists to think about is the person that's going to see it, the visitor, the guest, you know, the gallery goer, the person going to First Friday, whatever, whoever they might be, is, you know, it's, it's easy for people to cruise by artworks. Um, and it's easy for people to see something like is a work off level. Um, and it affects the way that you see the artwork. So um, I have this um, probably really obnoxious motto that is beyond reproach. And so at the last day of an installation, before we have a big opening for all of my team that are installing art and making the space perfect and beautiful, I say, I want to see it beyond reproach. So there's no little pieces of blue tape on the, on the walls. There's no dust bunnies. There's um, no drywall dust. There's um, everything's level. All the lights are focused in. There's no distractions. Um, because as soon as there's a distraction, it takes away from your piece. It might take away from the intent of your piece. Um, if you have, if you're a painter and you have a gallery wrapped canvas and um, you haven't treated the edges in some way, like with a frame or with painting, and there's big fingerprint smudges on the side, that can be maybe construed as charming because we're all artists working in dirty studios, but also it can be really distracting. Um, and, you know, the same for an, any kind of frame that has something in it, dust, sometimes bugs, um, big smudges, things like that. It's distracting. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a, a valid thing for that to be called distracting. It's something that um, it doesn't take too much care or attention to detail to make sure that your work is beyond reproach when you deliver it to a space. Um, this is my biggest thing that I recommend. I kind of talked about it at the beginning with the piece that I just um, dropped off, but the, the best way that you know your work can be successfully installed is if you do it yourself first. So you can't just say, here's these, this series of 30 sculptures that I want arranged on the ground um, in a spiral. You need to install those 30 sculptures in your studio or at your home or on your driveway in a spiral and take the picture of it and show them how much space there is between each one or um, how the light needs to hit them. If you have an artwork that has a really specific drop shadow you wanna get, you have to show that and show the angle of light that you wanna see. Um, so it just cuts out so many variables because when you install your own work, you learn um, the problems with the piece on the way. Even if it's something like, say you have a frame or a canvas that has a big wire on the back. Um, if it has too much slack and you hang it on the wall, and it pulls away from the wall, there's a big gap of like two inches or more. 
and you find that distracting because it is, if it pitches forward, um, that's something that you can fix at home. You know, you can, you can shorten that wire before you drop it off. You can make sure that it sits the way you want it to sit on the wall. Um, and then I recommend to document it, even if it's just a picture on your phone and you label it something like that with the height that you want it at, include that image with it on the packaging or with the piece. That is like the, the greatest gift you can give um, uh, someone who is going to be hanging your artwork for you. Um, and uh, this is the section is kind of about <laughs> the commitment to your work, um, because it's really easy just to say, well, you should get it professionally framed um, if you're at that point in your career. But the truth is even really well-known artists I have counseled on how they can um, cheaply frame their work or go work around framing it. Um, people that have big gallery exhibitions, if they have to frame an entire show, it's thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, it's not it's a, it's a universal problem, basically. Um, and it's wonderful because it shows the value of your work to have it professionally framed, archivally framed. It's really long lasting. It totally adds to the value of your piece, but most people can't afford it. Most artists cannot afford it. Um, so I always encourage looking into less expensive ways to frame, learning how to do some of it yourself, um, finding alternatives, but I also really encourage making sure that they are functional and successful before you turn them over to a gallery staff. Um, something like a lot of people who have works on paper, um, you've probably, if, you, if you're an artist who makes lots of works on paper, you've probably used magnets at some, at some point. It's been very popular in the past like 10 or 15 years for people to use like scientific magnets to install work. Um, and it can be really effective when it's well done, but it totally takes a professional person to do it and not be distracting. Um, so it's something I urge you to consider before you make someone um, do that for your work. And, you know, in the end, the materials that you choose directly affect the value of your piece and what the sale price of your work can be. So if you if you're, you know, um, if you're an oil painter and you have a raw edge to your canvas, that can be fine. But if you um, learn how to cut simple pieces of trim and stain them and attach them to your canvas um, to make a really simple frame. That is um, a little bit of labor and not much money that's really worth spending on your piece because it can up your value by like 50% or more. Um, and people will see that it, it, you care about it and that it has that kind of value. And I'm almost done because I know I'm already going long, Katrina. Okay. Um, I'm also just going to say that packaging between your home and a gallery space is um, a, just a really important thing. Um, if you're, even if it's, you're just wrapping it in bubble wrap, even if you're just wrapping it in plastic sheeting, something that's going to protect the surface of your piece, depending on what your medium is, um, that's easy for someone else to unpack. So again, we're thinking about other people when you're unpacking a piece. The worst thing for art is like the, a big rule is that we handle art as little as possible when you're an art handler. You, you don't want to overhandle a piece. It's dangerous for it. If you think of something like an antique teapot, you don't want to be moving that around every day. Um, it's fragile. You know, so if you're working with the same goes for any contemporary art, any any person who's making art now you want to handle it as little as possible. So the same goes for unpacking it. I, I don't wanna to have to put a blade near a canvas. You know, I wanna be able to open it easily. Um, and, uh, and with that packaging, again, those reference images, a guide to an installation, it can be handwritten even. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, um, a, a perfectly drafted um, layout. And, and if you have a hardware that goes with your piece, that, that conveys the intention of your piece, then include it with your piece. Um, I have a piece that um, was uh, a whole bunch of tiny miniature paintings, but they, um, I, I really liked these copper nails to be shown with them. So every time I showed that I included the copper nails with the piece because that was kind of part of it. Um, and uh, this is the last big thing, just, you know, if you're gonna be in a group show, like something like the, um, the Art Link Juried Exhibition, we, we usually have maybe like 50 artworks there, maybe more like a hundred artworks. It can be a really big show. 
You never want your work to be lost in the shuffle or to not be identified successfully. So always make sure not just that your name is on the piece somewhere, but that the title, the year, the medium is all included with it. And it's just so helpful for that gallery staff. What do you think, Rob? You want to take uh, over? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll pick up from here. And uh, I, I do appreciate that, Laura. You did outstanding job with covering a lot of things a lot of points that i wanted to touch on um as far as like the the technical aspect of things <clears throat> with with installing shows i can't stress enough that your reputation precedes you and the easier that you make it on the curator or whoever's hanging your your work the better impression you're going to leave which is going to lead to more opportunities potentially um the technical aspect of things, this diagram here kind of gives you an idea of what a gallerist or curator would be doing when they're hanging their work. It's a 60 inch midline. Okay. So that means the, the height of your work, uh, like this diagram, you cut that in half. There, there's math involved. Um, so when you're wiring your work, the placement of your hardware and the wire does matter um ideally like i i've worked with artists that were really attention to detail where everything was the same distance between the wire and the top of the piece and i've also worked with artists that are on the complete end of, other end of that spectrum um the the amount of wire that you use you don't want to make it too tight you don't want to make it too loose uh if you make it too tight it lessens the strength of the wire and could potentially snap um the use of wire it, you definitely want to weigh your piece and use the appropriate wire to handle that weight um if you look it up online and google it, it, it it'll give you a breakdown of what type of wire how much weight you could put on it um and most likely it would be like a like a braided wire um now i do recommend using either d hooks or the metal plates uh i would not use the the to the metal tooth for the back of unless it's like a framed photograph um or the eye the the eyelets those are not structurally sound when it comes to wiring uh they 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 fail pretty easily um now as far as the attention to details this if you, if you are paying attention to to these minor things it's going to help overall with the price of your work the impression that you're leaving and you'll stand out from other artists that are either dropping off work in a group show if you have a solo show if and if everything is consistent with each other that also goes a long way um materials matter uh and the, and the hardware matters your preparation justifies your pricing so if you're showing up with you know student grade canvases with um a warped frame uh that will hurt your overall results it come when it comes to sales um now also know your audience know your venue there's a big difference between hanging in a coffee shop than hanging in the gallery or a museum um you know if you are hot if you are showing in like a prestigious type of venue you're definitely going to want to pay closer attention to the details writing the title on the back of each piece helps tremendously because when we're doing tags we need to try to connect the dots between um the piece that's already hung and the and the tag that's going up um now is there another slide there laura Yes. Okay. So yeah, this kind of piggybacks off of what I was saying before. These steel plates or the D rings, um, when 
you are doing the math in the back of your piece. Uh, you want to make sure that you're placing it about a quarter of the way down, a quarter to a third of the way down, and leaving enough wire uh, so where it's between four to six inches from the top of the piece. This way, you know, your 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 piece will be snug against the wall and won't look too, um, I don't know, loose, if that makes sense. Um, the steel plates are great. The D-rings are great. Uh, those eyelets and the, and the sawtooth, uh, I would not recommend using. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, the, the, the golden picture frame wire hangers, those are, those are good as well. Uh, the, the more the weight, the higher the weight, the, the more nails you'll need, the bigger, the bigger rig system that you'll need. Um, next slide. Oh, okay. That's kind of it for hardware. Okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it definitely helps when people are showing up with their pieces well thought out, like Laura was stating. Um, and if you have that math set out across all of your pieces and it is consistent with each other, that goes such a long way. It doesn't necessarily need to be perfect, but I'd say within within a quarter, within, within a half inch of, of each piece. Because when I set up a, a laser level and I'm and I'm measuring, it makes the hanging system go, it makes the hanging process go a lot smoother. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. <laughs> The last thing that I had was just a, a few website resources. You know, the nice thing is that all this stuff is Googleable. Um, everybody, you know, knows about this because of ArtLink and Phoenix Office of Arts and Culture. Um, awesome workshops on here. Things are recorded. You can go through those. Um, Packin is the preparators and art uh, preparation, art handling, collection care information network. Um, is free. And they have tons of resources. And that's like the professional level, um, as well as the American Alliance of Museums. They just have lots of examples um, of how to prepare your work, like how to make cardboard corners for your painting before you uh, drop it off at a space, things like that. And then at, on um, still available on Snowbird's website is my series that was called Best Practices. And it's just a bunch of little mini videos that are pro tips. And there's anything that you look up that has art handling or preparator um, within it online is a, a great resource to know what to do to get your work ready. It's fantastic. What a wealth of knowledge. Thank you both. Um, and everyone, no one's going anywhere. Please be prepared with your questions. Again, we have plenty of time to review any specific questions you might have. Um, I have a couple additional notes. Um, I can't reinforce how important so much of what was already mentioned. Um, even from my perspective, I'm neither curator nor preparator or installer, um, but being so close to so many shows, you see some of these things over and over again. And some of the basics of providing those instructions, I think to Laura's point earlier, the person you drop it off with isn't necessarily the person who's going to be installing. It may not even be the next person. It may be passed over two or three different times. To have instructions to pass on to the next person to the next helps create um, an, an effective system for installation for shows. And the other thing, going back to our workshop, the, our previous workshop of submitting to calls, um, some of this information is really good to include in the information that when you submit to calls, including the substrate that your artwork is mounted to, if there are special installation instructions, sometimes that has, uh, it's a factor, not so much on the selection, but it helps the team be prepared for the installation when it gets to that point. So um, that level of detail really is paid attention to by many different people along the line of, of communications. So um, this is your time to ask questions of either Laura and Robert or both. And um, if you'd like to add your 
questions to the chat, we can go from there. Or if someone has a question to start us off, please feel free. All right, Dee. And feel free to add your voice to this. But the first question is from Dee Ruff. She says, she says, I create contemporary abstract mosaics and mixed media. How do you handle heavier works? Are Z clips and French cleats okay in most exhibitions? Some of my works are really lightweight and some in process are heavier. Good question. Um, I, I, I believe French cleats, depending on the weight would be ideal because that is a, a solid um, rigging system. Uh, depending on what surface you, they're hanging on because if it's uh drywall or you know they might need to either find a stud or use um uh, what's the word i'm looking for um anchors anchors thank you <laughs> i'm sorry i'm a little under the weather so my brain's not really working correctly right now um so yeah i would i would say if you if you know the weight include that with the information that you're dropping off with uh because that would help the person who needs to hang it um prepare accordingly yeah. i hope that yeah. your question. i think I, I love a good uh cleat i think that that is one of those things that shows um the professionalism of of your work um some people that have like frame photographs will design the frame with a french cleat and it's a clean, really snug fit to the wall. Um, and I would in, include that hardware just in case. It's like when you get um, a mount for your TV and they include all that extra hardware and you only need some of it because you might find a stud. Um, it's, it's helpful to include that um, extra hardware just in case so that you know, it's clear that it, except it might just be a drywall wall with nothing behind it, you know? Thanks very much. Some of mine are really lightweight. Um, I do some pieces that uh, where I recycle polystyrene and I have an inner core of very light styrofoam type material. And then I coat it with layers, thin layers of cement based materials. And so they're not that heavy, but I have some I'm working on right now that are going to be probably larger than 30 by 30. And so I was thinking the French cleat would probably be the best situation but as i know some places will only allow you to use d rings here in the tucson area so i didn't know if artlink has a hmm. a uh you know is, uh won't allow it in some places well we don't we don't necessarily have like a policy i know that uh, i guess that really depends on the venue and the walls because i know with flynn katrina they had those almost like cloth yeah wall coverings where right. it couldn't be too much weight on it because it would drag and stretch out the cloth yeah i have a sculpture there right now a wall sculpture and it's it's very lightweight it's mm -hmm. kind of shell like so it's super light compared to what it would be if it was a solid form um it's more like a seashell kind of form but um, anything larger, I think probably at Flynn, you wouldn't, you would want it to be on a tabletop or something if it was wow. heavy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like it, it, including that information when you're dropping off or even before you drop off. So you can plan accordingly with the venue. Um, like, hey, my piece weighs 45 pounds. Do you have a specific rigging preference or hardware that you prefer me to bring or something like that. So this way, both you and the venue can plan accordingly. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this whole discussion. You guys are wonderful. <laughs> appreciate you attending. Thank you, Dee. The, the reference um, to the Flynn Foundation is, is the perfect example. And just a quick jump off point, again, connecting it to um, a submission to calls. A lot of what we're talking about is, you know, uh, gallery exhibitions, et cetera. When you're submitting your work to calls, if you are submitting works of weight, um, please do include that detail because as an example, Flynn Foundation, there are actually a limited number of walls that can take a work of weight. So it actually may be a factor in the selection. And what we don't want to do is have a panel select a work 
and find out that we don't have the right wall to install it at the last minute. So we want to avoid things like that. So again, the more detail, the better. And, you know, I think the other thing to just note is that some of your work might not be um, meant for every venue because some of the um, smaller galleries or um, ones that are in um, different spaces, like if it's a, it's a multifunctional space, they'll have those hanging systems with wires um, and hooks that come down, uh, if you're familiar with those. So, and those can be like the, the library gallery um, at Burton Bar has those. Um, and that can be quite challenging to convert your work to be hung that way. So there's, you know, if you had a piece of weight there, you just really wouldn't be able to show it in that gallery space. And usually those calls preempt that. Hopefully you'll see that they know that they're, they have the limitations. So you wow. can, you know, control what you would submit. And, that, and that's a prime example of knowing the venue on where you're going to be bringing the work because they have a specific hanging system. And if your piece doesn't match that, it could, they could potentially turn it down when you go to drop it off tell you to bring it back, bring it home. So we don't want that to happen. Exactly. So a quick, uh, question for, for uh, Robert. Regarding, yes. uh, you said no uh, screw eyes, uh, but sometimes with those uh, wall hanging, the, the hanging systems, sometimes they, they're asking for the screw eyes in there so they can uh, latch it in because of the system that they have. And also uh, with the screw eyes, I use, sometimes I use, I try to use D-rings for uh, wiring the back of canvases. However, mm -hmm. sometimes I, I'll use the screw eyes. And again, uh, the canvases aren't, uh, you know, they're four or five foot. They're not real heavy, but uh, the screw eyes are used for the wire that I used, you know, the, the hanging wire. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, does it make a difference? Or I guess there's um, two, two questions in one there. I mean, uh, that's a great question. And it really, it, it really, yeah, it would really matter on where you are placing the eyelet rings um and the the load bearing weight for those because i've seen i've seen artists use screw like those those eyelet screws and they're too thin and the wire once you hang it it actually pulls it right out of the wood um with d rings the i mean depending on which ones you get there's, there's usually two points of um attachment where the eyelet rings are just it's basically the one screw um so i'm not saying you can't use them i would just say to if there's a better way or a better option available to go that route they also you know it's just like anything else with threading um something like that it's it's about the um it's about the way that the pull on it is so it's always it always comes down to physics for hanging right, right? So weight coming off a D-ring that has two screws that are going um, perpendicular into the wood is catching on to that good like meat part of the wood. And the pull is coming off the ring. It's not coming off the screw itself. Where the screw eye, the pull is coming off the threading of the screw. And it's just more likely to be released. Right. If those so eyelets, just, a, just a little wimpier. Right. And if those eyelets are on the inside of the frame, you're, you're, it, the weight of that is directly pulling it in and if you put it on the outside of the frame where it's facing the wall you're leaving yourself like about a quarter to a half an inch that your piece is going to be hanging off of the wall that included with the wire it could be hanging it off it could be hanging off even further than that you know so it's just the the physics of it all like like Laura was saying, that darn physics. Yeah, <laughs> math and physics. <laughs> Thanks for your question, Joe. Are there other questions? Uh, yeah, I had a question. This is Craig. Um, I deal with lighting uh, and hanging like large lights, uh, sculptures type from the uh, ceiling. What would I need to bring to accommodate? a facility to be able to do that as far as wiring goes and being able to hook up to electricity as well. Uh, would, would I be the one to supply all of that or would that be something that would be provided there? I'm just curious as to how I would go about that. I think that's all about the information being provided in the, in the, in the forefront, in the beginning. 
Okay. Like I have a piece that weighs X amount of pounds. This is my rigging system. Basically communication with the venue. Okay. Um, you know, before dropping it off, before anything, because if it is selected, say, for a, a show <laughs> or exhibition, you're definitely going to want to divulge that information to see if it is fiscally possible. Right. Physically okay. possible. Not fiscally. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Because every venue would be different as far as what they have in their rafters or, or right. the ability to hang something from the ceiling. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome. Next question in the chat or shout it out. <laughs> All Laura, right. Uh, Laura, you were doing when you were at uh, Smoka, you were doing these. I mentioned this to you once before. Uh, you were doing the uh, the handy moments or what handy minutes with Laura or whatever you know the, mm -hmm. the different tool uh, tool usage things. Uh, are those still up on the uh, Smoke website or? They are. Yeah, it's called Best Practices. Yes, thank you. Um, if you look at look it up, look up Smoke and Best Practices. I I checked yesterday to find it. It's not just me on there. I had guest people on to share um, other just like it'd be like like sound bites of knowledge. Um, and you know, and you can find lots of other people as resources for that, but they are available, Joe. <laughs> they were great. They were great. If nobody ever saw them, I recommend looking them up because they, they were great. I mean, everything from uh, the type of drill to use and uh, the reason why. So they were good not only for as an installationist, but I think just stuff around the house, you know, hanging the artwork at home and how you go about it. So there's little tips I thought were, were very good. So it's bringing that professional grade knowledge to the, uh, the everyday person, just stuff around around the house. So I, I find it really useful. I think it'd be great if you uh, continued doing that on your own. <laughs> oh man, I'll have to find the time, but uh, thank you, appreciate <laughs> that a time. lot. <laughs> Could be my agent, Joe. Right, <laughs> I enjoy it. <laughs> Good. Are there any questions about like actually wiring a piece, like, like the actual process of doing that? Does anyone need help with that aspect of things? I mean, no. Cool. No, but if you have a better way of doing it, uh, we're all ears. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I can send out um, just a uh, an email, basically outlining what I, how what I do. Uh, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, I, honestly, you could you could probably Google it, and, and it'll it'll give you the same information. Um, but as far as you know, looping it and how many times to wrap it, the the amount of slack that you want to give yourself. Um, so, if you want to, do we have the Katrina? Do we have an email list of everyone that's on here, or she had to leave? I think she's gone. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you, Linda. <laughs> um, if you want to, let me see here. Let me share my screen really quick. I have something that will bear with me here. Uh, Well, I guess not. <laughs> if you want, um, send me an email. I'll give you my email address and I can send it to you directly. It's simply uh, robert at artlinkphx.org. And then I'll send you what I have in regards to a process on, on just simply wiring, um, you know, uh, a piece that would be preferred. Does that make sense? Again, I'm under the weather. So if I'm babbling like an idiot, I apologize. <laughs> this is great. I'm I'm sorry for my technical difficulties, everyone. I'm I'm back and I'm looking at the, I think I just saw a request for your 
email. Um, so it's robert at heartlinkphx.org. Right now. Got another um, question in the chat there. And um, I think, you know, we have this, um, uh, this is, it says up for the back of a stretch canvas, is it better to string a wire straight across tightly horizontally between the D-rings or to give the wire some, to allow the wire some give to make it relax. Um, and uh, we had that, let me pull up that diagram from before actually. Um, <clears throat> there is kind of a formula to it and, and Rob, I think you could maybe speak to it better. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do before, but um, I wasn't able to share my screen. <laughs> Let me see here. User error. <laughs> I think Zoom is having fun with us, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, nope. That one? Can everybody see that? Are we on the picture? The The one that shows the... The wire there, um, you see that this one has uh, 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 the proportionally. You always want to be in like the top third of the of the frame, and then have that wire at its highest peak still have a lot of clearance from the top of the frame, so the hardware doesn't interfere with that the lip of the frame. What do you think, Rob? Uh, exactly. Yes. So I just put <laughs> something in the in the chat basically the diagram that gives um, just a, a brief like a tutorial on how to wrap a wire. Um, you know, if, the, if, the, if you do it too tight, like I said, it, it'll, it'll decrease the strength. And if you do it too loose, it'll hang off the wall too much. Mm -hmm. So you're definitely gonna wanna have a nice sweet spot in the middle um, where the, the, the middle of the painting to the top of the painting, your wire is basically hanging right in the middle of that. So about, about a, a quarter or a third down is where you're gonna want your wire to be. And then that um, that tension also, if you've ever tried to hang a piece that has like a really like wing kind of tension, um, it's, it's hard to catch the hardware on the wall, whether it's a screw or a nail or like a brass hanger with the hook, it's much harder to, um, you know, to see to the side of the artwork and get that mounted on the wall. Um, and then it doesn't, it doesn't fall nicely and give the support that you want to have. Are there other questions? Well, I had, a, I had a question. Is a best practices because of your name? I'm just curious. Would it be like oh, yeah. genteel practices if it was I thought I was doing very it? clever when I titled it. And that was, to be clear for everybody here, that was a pandemic thing. You know, we were most, most art spaces were completely closed down. The museum was completely closed down. We didn't have a lot of programming to offer people. And as a small staff, we all came up with different ideas. And um, to be able to share that while people had time to work on projects at home, to like arrange their own salon walls, that kind of thing. That's what the intention was. Um, and yes, in, a, in an arts institution or in a cultural institution, most any businesses you talk about best practices, right? Awesome, love that. <laughs> and just to answer the, the question about um, the availability of this recording, this and the previous workshops will all be uploaded to YouTube in the coming days. So keep an eye out for that. And we will also be sending out the link uh, via um, ArtLink newsletters and e-blasts. It'll be readily available. Are there additional questions for Laura or Robert? All right. Well, thank you all for joining us this evening and big thanks to both Laura Spalding Best and Robert Gentile for spending time with us on the same evening and sharing your expert insight. I know I learned a lot and I hope you all did too. And uh, keep an eye for, keep an eye out for the link to the recording, as I just mentioned. And please join us next Tuesday 
for the fourth in this uh, fourth in the series of four workshop series, where we'll be focused on uh, promoting your work. So thank you all. Have a wonderful night, and I hope you're all enjoying our Detour 35. See you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you. Good. Thanks, everybody.